My wife and I found him lying dead in the U alley, face downward. What did you do then? I hurried across the moor to fetch the doctor, Dr. Mortimer. He was at dinner with Miss Stapleton and her brother. Very well, Barrowman. That's all. Yes, sir. Dr. Mortimer, to what do you attribute the death of Sir Charles? Heart failure, sir. I might add that for some time, Sir Charles was in a highly nervous state, worried. Something was preying on his mind. And did he confide to you what was preying on his mind? Well... No. Well, then what about those footprints, Mortimer? As though Sir Charles had been tiptoeing back towards the house. I examined them myself, and as a man of science, so I... So did I, Mr. Stapleton. More likely Sir Charles was running. Running? Running from what? If you please, gentlemen, one at a time. Why don't you tell the truth, all of you? Tell all you know. Silence, Mr. Franklin. You've already testified you were not there, know nothing whatever of this matter. Nevertheless, I insist he was murdered. Murdered, I tell you. That will do, sir, that will do. There were no marks on the body of any kind, Dr. Mortimer? No. Then as his physician, what would you say was the cause of Sir Charles's death? Most emphatically, a heart failure, sir. Such then, gentlemen, is the verdict of this coroner's court. Call it what you like. Sir Charles was murdered. There's more than one person in this room knows I speak the truth. I know why on earth you want all these clippings about this Baskerville fellow. I have an idea, Watson, that young Sir Henry isn't destined for a very long existence in this world. What? My conjecture is that he'll be murdered. Murdered? It'll be very interesting to see if my deductions are accurate. Oh, Mr. Holmes, while you were out, a gentleman called to see you and left this. He asked you to give it to me? Oh, no, sir. He just left it by mistake, I imagine. Uh -huh. Uh, Dr. Mortimer. He didn't leave his name, sir. No, it's here on the stick, Mrs. Hudson. Oh, is it? I didn't notice. Do you know any Dr. Mortimer, Watson? No. Uh, what did he want? He didn't say, sir. What do you make of it, Watson? Why should I make anything of it? The fellow came to see you. Ah, but what kind of a fellow? Let me hear you reconstruct him from his walking stick by our usual method of elementary observation. Well, I should say that Dr. Mortimer is a successful man. Well esteemed. Good. Excellent. I should say that he does a great deal of his visiting on foot, because the iron ferrule is, is worn down. Perfectly sound. Now, let's have a look at this inscription. From his friends of the CCH. CCH. I should say that's the something or other hunt. Really, Watson, you've excelled yourself. Oh, has anything escaped me? Almost everything, my dear fellow. Huh? A present to a doctor, I'd say, is more likely to come from a hospital than a hunt. And when the letters CC are placed before the hospital, the name Charing Cross Hospital rather obviously presents itself. Oh, well, you, you may be right. Furthermore, I'd say the Dr. Mortimer had a small practice in the country and was the owner of a dog. How can you tell that? Quite simple. From the teeth marks. Look, you can see for yourself. A rather large dog, I'd say. And unless I'm mistaken, Dr. Mortimer will call on us again in a few moments. Rubbish, Holmes. Rubbish. How the devil can you deduce that? Well, as he left his stick, isn't it reasonable to presume that he'll come back and get it? Dr. Mortimer, sir. Mr. Holmes? Uh, yes, come in, Dr. Mortimer. I took the liberty of calling upon and you. And left your stick. Oh, so I did. <laughs> Thank you so much. A presentation, I see. Yes, sir, from Charing Cross Hospital. Uh, this is my friend, Dr. Watson. Of course. How do you do, sir? Mr. Holmes. You're the one man in all England who can help me. Well, won't you sit down? Thank you. A friend of mine is in grave danger. May I inquire his name? Sir Henry Baskerville, heir to the estate of Baskerville Hall. I'm in mortal fear Sir Henry's life will be snuffed out. Why, what makes you think that? I have information which leads me to believe that for centuries past, every Baskerville who's inherited the estates has met with a violent and sudden death. But as I recall it, Sir Charles died from natural causes, heart failure. 
Apparently. And that was the verdict of the coroner, in which I, as a child's physician, concurred. But there was one point which I kept back from the police, from everybody. Yes? About 50 yards from where Sir Charles fell dead were footprints. A man's or a woman's? Mr. Holmes. They were the footprints of a gigantic hound. A hound? Well, why didn't you report it? Not a soul would have believed it. And during the night it rained, and in the morning the marks were completely obliterated. But I saw them as clearly as I see you. And then, a few days ago, as one of the executors of the estate, I found this. This old document. Legend of the Hound of the Baskervilles. Uh, let me read it to you, Mr. Holmes. It's quite short. I won't bore you, I promise. Yes, please, go on. In the time of the Great Rebellion, about uh, 1650, Baskerville Manor was held by Hugo of that name, a profane and godless man. One Michaelmas, this Hugo stole down upon a neighboring farm and carried off the daughter of the house. He locked her in an upper chamber, and while Hugo and his friends were carousing, as was their nightly custom... <laughs> Such a cuddlesome little wench never existed before, I swear. Cheeks soft as velvet, a form so wondrously rounded. Oh, ah. Tell us more. What happened then? Uh, where was I? A uh, form, you were saying. Oh, yes. Yeah. No need to cry out, I told her. You go will not hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> with that, I whisked her up on my saddle, covered her with my cloak, and we were off like the wind. You brought her here? To the manor? Where is she? Go fetch her, Hugo. <laughs> Easier said than done, eh, Hugo? How can he fetch her if she isn't here? Yeah. <laughs> oh, she is, eh? Come on, I'll show you. Oh, oh, oh. I'll tell you. <laughs> These drunken sots would give Hugo the... <laughs> there is no girl. <laughs> Gone! Gone! Uh, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, look at my oh, hey. What ails him? Hugo! Oh, no. Damn! Get him! Yes, Hugo. What's wrong, sir? She's gone, the wench! Well, don't stand there gaping. Go bring my mare. What's wrong? I've never seen him in such a rage. Where's he gone? <laughs> Let's follow him. Let's go, Roderick. Farewell. Come on, Matthew. Hold the stirrup, you blockhead. I'll give my soul to the devil for that wench. <laughs> you hear how he fetched his soul to the devil for that wench? Well, may he find her and wed her. Then the devil will have his soul. <laughs> On and on they rode, until suddenly they came upon the body of the girl. Dead. Then, from just over a rise, they heard sounds so hideous that the blood froze in their veins. And looking up, they beheld... could get at him, Sir Hugo was dead. His body literally torn to shreds. Such is the history of the Hound that has cursed the Baskerville family ever since, many having been unhappy in their deaths that have been sudden, violent, and mysterious. Well, Mr. Holmes? Interesting. Very interesting. What do you think? I don't know. But Sir Henry's arriving from Canada tomorrow. Please understand my dilemma, my responsibility. I was Sir Charles' best friend. My duty is to protect that boy. If I should take him down there to Baskerville Hall and anything happened to him... Now what I suggest, Dr. Mortimer, is that when Sir Henry arrives, you bring him here. Oh, thank you, thank you, Mr. Holmes. You don't know what a load you've taken off my mind. <clears throat> Good night, Dr. Watson. Good night, sir. You've left your stick again. Oh, thank you. By the way, Dr. Mortimer, you have a dog. I have no dog. Then how do you account for these marks? Evidently the teeth marks of a dog. I used to have a dog, a small spaniel. But it died. Good night. Good night. Well, Holmes, what do you make of it? 
You think there's anything in it? Good heavens, you're not going to start scratching on that infernal thing, are you? Dear old Watson. <laughs> Be sure you sail with us. Thanks. You've all been wonderful. The very best of luck, sir. And the same to you. This Goodbye. way, Sir Henry. Ah, here you are, Sonny. Thank you, sir. And you? Thank you, Sir Henry. And you? Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Oh, Sir Henry. Oh, it's too bad. It's all over. Just when you and Betsy Ann were really getting to know each other. Oh, but we are going to see one another in London, aren't we, Sir Henry? Oh, I should love to. But uh, I, I have to go down to the country, unfortunately. To your ancestral estate. How exciting. Perhaps, Betsy Ann, if you're very good, Sir Henry will ask us to visit him. Of course, yes. We're staying at the Savoy. Don't forget. I will. Goodbye. Goodbye. Sir Henry? Yes, I'm Dr. Mortimer. Your uncle was my best friend. How do you do? Thank you for coming to meet me. Not at all, my dear boy. Did you have a pleasant trip? Splendid, thank you. I've taken rooms for you at the Northumberland Hotel, where I'm stopping. Fine. I assume you'll be staying in London for a few days. Yes, I haven't seen it since I was a boy. Thank you, sir. Northumberland Hotel. Sir Charles's death was a great personal loss to me. I was more than his doctor. What's this? What are those words? Do you mind, Sir Henry? No, not at all. What do you make of it, Mr. Holmes? Why do you think that last word is printed in ink? Oh, that's simple enough. The words have been snipped from the London Times. That's evident from the topography. But the word moor is an unusual word. Your correspondent evidently couldn't find it in the newspaper. You'll admit, Dr. Mortimer, there's nothing supernatural about this. Supernatural? Uh, tell me, Sir Henry, has anything else unusual happened to you today since your arrival in London? I can't think of anything. Unless you'd say that losing one of your boots is unusual. You lost one of your boots? He has brand new ones, too. Never had them on. I put them outside the door to be clean, and when I went to fetch them, there was only one there. Brand new boots, and you, and you put them out to be clean? They were tan ones, Dr. Watson. It prevents them from scratching to have them polished first. Now, will you please tell me what this is all about? Dr. Mortimer bringing me here to see you. This letter, it's about you, Sir Henry. Your inheritance, Baskerville Hall. And Dr. Mortimer thinks that it might not be safe for you to go down there. Safe? On account of a hound. A wild, supernatural monster that has cursed you Baskervilles for the last two or three hundred years. Oh, oh, that sounds grand. A family ghost, eh? Why didn't you tell me about this before, Dr. Mortimer? Well, uh, Mr. Holmes suggested... He's going to tell you about it now, Sir Henry. Take him back to the hotel, Dr. Mortimer. Show him that old document. Tell him everything, the whole business. I'll join you a little later. Come on, we'll stroll back. You can tell me on the way. This is not something to joke about, Sir Henry. Believe me. See you presently. Good night. What's up? Shh. Come on, Watson. What's up now? Where are we going? You'll see soon enough. We've not a moment to lose. on that handsome. This letter dates back to about 1650. Get your paper, evening paper. Evening paper, sir. Get your evening paper. Get your paper, evening paper. Evening paper, sir. Tells all the latest news that's going on, sir. Tells you all about it. Thank you, sir. Evening paper. A dissident. 
but he was a dissident. Look out! Stop! Whip up, Jeffy. Whip up, I say. Very good, sir. Who was it? I don't know, but it's just as I expected. Hadn't we better hurry on and, and warn them? No, 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 no. They're not in any danger now. Here's the number of that hansom. Find out from Scotland Yard who the cabbie is, and if you can, fetch him along to the hotel. I'll do my best. Well, now that Dr. Mortimer has told you everything, what have you decided? To go there, of course. Good, that's what I thought you'd say. And if Dr. Mortimer will only guarantee that this uh, supernatural hound of his will really appear, I'd call the radio. Oh, don't say that, my boy. <laughs> Sounds like a bogey story. They tell kids to frighten them at night, doesn't it, Mr. Holmes? Yes, rather. It might interest you to know, however, that you were shadowed from my house. Shadowed? Yes, and probably have been ever since you arrived in London. By whom? I don't know. A man in a hansom. He must have seen me run after him and had the cabby dash off. Oh, by the by, did you ever discover your mislaid boot? No. Uh... Hello. Well, the brown one's here, but one of the black ones is gone. I'll ring for the chambermaid. Perhaps she can explain. Yes, do. Now, why should anyone want to take an odd boot and then exchange a brand new one for an old one? Can you explain it, Mr. Holmes? Um, no, no, I can't. Come in. Did you ring, sir? Yes, about that boot of mine. Oh, I haven't found it yet, sir. I've made inquiries all over the hotel. Well, it's back, the brown one, but now one of my black ones is gone. Oh, sir, that is odd. Who else except yourself has access to this apartment? Only the housekeeper, sir, and she wouldn't do a thing like that. No, 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 of course not. I'm terribly sorry, sir. I'll do my best to find your boot. All right, thanks. Oh. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, Dr. Watson. I've got him. Come on in, Clayton. Come this way. This is John Clayton, number 2704. How do you do? How do you do, Clayton? Won't you, won't you sit down? I won't keep you long. It's good of you to come. Thank you, sir. Now, Clayton, I wish you'd tell us who your fare was that watched a certain house on Baker Street this evening and later followed these two gentlemen. Well, I'm glad to you. You know as much as I do, sir. Well, not quite as much, I hope. The gent said as how he was a, a detective, sir. Oh, he did? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, how would you describe this, sir, uh, this gentleman, Clayton? Well, it's, uh, I suppose about 35 years of age, sir. Mm -hmm. Dressed like a toff. Had a small black beard, sir. And the colour of his eyes? I can't say, sir. Mm -hmm. I see. Uh, when did he tell you that he was a detective? At the station, sir. When he gave me the two guineas, what he'd promised me. Mm -hmm. uh, did he tell you his name? Yes, sir. Uh, what did he say it was? Sherlock Holmes, sir. What? Well, that's the name what he gave me, sir. <laughs> Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> <laughs> well, whoever it is at least has a sense of humor. Here, Clayton. Here's, uh, here's something for your trouble. Thank you, sir. Thank you kindly, sir. Is there anything else I can tell you, sir? Nothing at all, I think. All right, sir. Good day, sir. Good day. Good day, gentlemen. Well, Mr. Holmes, have we progressed, uh, do you think? Perhaps. Uh, tell me, Sir Henry, when were you planning to go down to Dartmoor? Immediately, tomorrow. I'm really awfully keen to see the old place. Uh, you'll accompany us, Mr. Holmes. Uh, I'd like to very much, Dr. Mortimer, but unfortunately I have some rather pressing business here in London. Of course, and there's no need. Please don't think me ungrateful, Dr. Mortimer. I do appreciate your concern for me. But this story of the Hound, it's nonsense. As for that silly letter and all the rest of it, I'm sure it can all quite easily be explained. I quite agree with you, Sir Henry. But all the same, if you don't mind, I'd like to ask uh, Dr. Watson to go down with you. What, sir? If you don't mind, Watson. Gladly, if you care to come. Of course. I'll be delighted. Good. Well, thank you, thank you, Dr. Watson, and thank you, sir. Then we'll stalk the hound together. Now, don't take it too lightly, Sir Henry. Well, I must be going. Uh, Mr. Holmes. Yes, Dr. Mortimer. About that person calling himself Sherlock Holmes. Very interesting, Dr. Mortimer. Uh, you'll um, keep me posted, Watson. Write me daily reports. To the smallest detail, Holmes. Fine. I give him into your care, Sir Henry. Guard him well. Good night. <laughs> Guard me well. Huh. I, I like that. Oh, God. <laughs> Here we are, Sir Henry, on famous Dartmoor. And what a history it has. You see those rocks over there? 
Actually, they're stone houses built by Neolithic man 50, 100,000 years ago. You don't suppose the Baskervilles go back that far? <laughs> and over there, beyond that hill, those dark spots, that's the great Grimpen Mire. As treacherous a morass as exists anywhere. Thousands of lives have been sucked down into its bottomless depths. Cheerful little spot. But fascinating. Oh, it is, Sir Henry. And mysterious. No wonder the people about here have such odd beliefs. Some will tell you that nothing ever really dies up on the moor. And after a time, one gets to believe it. Really? Do you believe that? Of course not. If I believed all the legends about this place, I wouldn't live here. I wouldn't have the courage. And now, if you look, Baskerville Hall, the home of your ancestors, Sir Henry. How are you, Barrowman? Very well, thank you, sir. Oh, thank you. This is Barrowman the butler, Sir Henry, and Mrs. Barrowman. Welcome, Sir Henry. Welcome to Baskerville Hall. Thank you. Barrowman was with your uncle most of his life, as was his father before him. Well, I hope you'll be just as happy here with me. Thank you, Sir Henry. Baskerville Hall. And just as it's always been, Sir Henry, your uncle did some modernizing upstairs, but down here, nothing has been added or taken away since Sir Hugo's time. Well, I wouldn't say it's the most cheerful spot I've ever seen. I beg your pardon, sir. What time do you wish dinner served, sir? Early, I think. Dr. Mortimer has to drive home. Tell the coachman to have the carriage ready after dinner. I'll tell him, sir. Now, I suppose you'd like to freshen up. There's hot water in your room, sir. I'll show the way. Thank you. Be careful, sir. These steps are a bit in need of repair. to startle you. I thought you might be asleep. What is it? Come quickly. Someone's prowling around. What are you doing, Barryman? Oh, nothing, sir. It was the window. The window? Yes, sir. I was just seeing that it was fastened. What well, does it matter whether it's fastened or not, the window on the second floor? I go around every night seeing that they're fastened. Sir Charles always insisted upon it. Well, that sounds reasonable enough. Well, if it's properly fastened now, Barryman, you can get back to bed. Yes, sir. Thank you. Do you see anything? Nothing. Nothing except a pinpoint of light a long way off, over there by the crags. Well, keep your eye on that point of light. And tell me what happens. Do you, do you see anything now? 
It's gone now. There it is again. And there it goes. Just as I thought. Adamant was singling someone. Come on, get some clothes. We'll find out. It's still there. <laughs> Try not to lose sight of it. down here. Whoever it is may come back. What about getting a little further away from that light? Up there. Good idea. Whoever it is knows his way among these rocks. We don't. Who the devil can it be? You were right about Barrowman. Yes, but what connection can there possibly be between that horrible creature and, and Barrowman? You know, I've half a mind to fire the fellow in the morning, then notify the police and let them shadow him. No, it's the last thing that Holmes would want us to do. Our job is to watch Barrowman. Watch him like a hawk. Come on, let's get back. What do you think it is? What does it sound like to, to you? Well, if we were back in London, this would seem ridiculous. Let's get on. Look here, Doctor. You don't believe that nonsense, do you? Of course not. No more than you do. Good morning, Sir Henry. So that's our famous moor, eh? Yes, sir. Come in. Oh, where's Sir Henry? He went out, sir. Where? Across the moor. Didn't I tell you to let me know immediately if Sir Henry ever ventured out there alone? I know, but I only just found out from my wife.
Oh, forgive my shouting at you, Dr. Watson. My name's Stapleton. Live just across the moor. But how did you know my name, sir? Oh, from Dr. Mortimer, one of our neighbors. Oh, yes, sir. Hi, Sir Henry. He's very well, thank you. Oh, we were a bit worried he might decide not to come here. After the rumors that followed the sad death of Sir Charles, has Mr. Sherlock Holmes come to any conclusion yet? I really can't say. Oh, is he going to honor us with a visit? I haven't the slightest idea. Well, if I can be of any help, I do hope you'll call upon me. I know this place pretty well. Thank you, but I, I don't think I shall be needing any help. Wonderful place, this moor. From a scientist's point of view, there's nothing like it. Vast, barren, mysterious. You see those bright green spots over there? Seems a little more fertile than the rest. Fertile? That's the great Grimpen Mire. One false step means death. I, only yesterday, one of the moor ponies wandered into it. Turned me sick with horror to see it struggling. And the sound of its screams... What's that? Oh, that. Well, the people round here say it's the hound. Surely you don't believe such rot? Bugs make queer noises. Or perhaps it's a bittern booming. A bittern? Yes, a very rare bird. Practically extinct. If anything is extinct on the moor... Stop! Stop! Look out! Stop! That was a voice. A woman's voice. Thank heavens you heard me. Another few yards, you'd have been into that mire. Looks innocent, doesn't it? But only yesterday, a little moor pony got into it, and that was the end of it. Well, thank you for shouting at me. You're Sir Henry? Yes. Oh, I suppose I should say welcome, Sir Henry, but I'm afraid it wouldn't be sincere. Oh, that's understandable. The stranger coming here and taking the place of someone you were fond of. Oh, it's not that. I... No? Tell me, what is it? Sounds silly, I know, but... Oh, it's not that ridiculous hound legend. I never used to believe those things till I came to live down here. But you do now. You're rich. You can go anywhere you want to. There are so many other places to live in the world. Interesting places. Just now, I find this place very interesting. Uh. Why, hello, Beryl. Hello. Oh, Dr. Watson, my stepsister, Miss Stapleton. How do you do? How do you do? Hello, Doctor. And this, I'm sure, must be... Oh, Sir Henry, my brother. How are you? I was just telling Dr. Watson how delighted we are you decided to come here. I'm here and to stay. Oh, that's splendid. You know, it's been quite dull down here since the hall's been closed. It's wide open now, especially to friends of my uncle. You must both come and dine with me. You must come to us first. Yes, what about tomorrow night? You and Dr. Watson. We'll invite the neighbors over to meet you. Of course, you already know Dr. Mortimer. The only other one's old Mr. Franklin. Who's he? Oh, wait till you meet him, Sir Henry. He'll bring suit against you, I warn you. What on earth for? Oh, you'll find something. Suing people is a passion with him. I'll look forward to meeting him. All right, tomorrow night, then. <laughs> Thank you. And thank you again for rescuing me. Goodbye. Goodbye. Were it not a personal insult to Sir Henry, I would never have come here this evening. Oh, but why, Mr. Franklin? As a stickler for convention. I'm not in the habit of breaking bread with my host on the eve of prosecuting him. <laughs> Great heavens, what crime have I committed now? A most gruesome one, Mr. Stapleton, that of body snatching. What? You're a body snatcher, sir. A ghoul, a despoiler of graves. Oh, come, come, Mr. Franklin. That's a very serious charge. Oh, Beryl, refill Mr. Franklin's glass, will you? Thank you, my dear. And an excellent vintage it is, too. But if you're implying that I'm tipsy, sir... Oh, of course he's not. Tell us more, Mr. Franklin. Whose body has Mr. Stapleton been snatching? According to my evidence, sir, Mr. Stapleton was seen digging among the old stone huts on the moor and removed from there a skull. <laughs> oh, that? <laughs> a most interesting relic, Sir Henry, of Neolithic man. I'll show it to you after dinner. 50,000 years old if it's a day. Nonetheless, sir, you removed it from the grave without the consent of the next of kin. And according to British law, that constitutes body snatching. Deny that if you can. But what good will it do you to prosecute Mr. Stapleton? None, sir. I have no interest in the matter. I act entirely from a sense of public duty. If you care to drop by my house someday and take a tipple of wine with me, I'll be glad to tell you a thing or two about Everybody here, about him prowling the Grimpen Mire at nights, and why he takes her with him. Oh, there's no secret about us. As you know, I dabble a bit in the occult. 
Mrs. Mortimer has very strong mediumistic qualities. She finds the old caves on the moor particularly conducive to psychic phenomena. Very interesting. Have you ever tried to communicate with my uncle since his death? Oh, yes. On several occasions. But with no success. But if my wife could send to a seance tonight while you, Sir Henry, are present, we might... No, no, James. Not tonight. Please. Perhaps some other time. Shall we have coffee in the drawing room? Well, of course, Mrs. Morgan. I think I can persuade my wife. Well, if you and Dr. Watson had cared to see my little collection. Oh, yes, the scarf. Yes, we're in here. Thank you very much. Quite a museum. Oh, a very modest little collection. But this one really is quite a treasure. You'll observe its unusual cranial index. Gentlemen, gentlemen. My wife has consented. She's agreed to a seance. Splendid. Oh, fine. Please come at once. Now then, if you'll all get chairs and arrange yourselves naturally, comfortably here by the fire. As Shakespeare says, you can call spirits from the vasty deep, but will they answer? They'll not answer scoffers or skeptics. If that's your attitude, Mr. Franklin, perhaps you wouldn't mind leaving us. Oh, I'm sure Mr. Franklin didn't mean to doubt. Of course I doubt. And I ask you to keep a civil tongue in your head, Dr. Mortimer. Ordering me out from under the roof of my host is grounds for a very nasty little lawsuit. Oh, <laughs> come now, Mr. Franklin. Sit down by me. Now, tonight we may communicate with Sir Charles. Find out what he feared so greatly. What he was running away from. Now, Jennifer, you sit here, please. Sir Henry, here. Or would you please put out those lights? Certainly. <laughs> Stapleton. That light, please. Dr. Watson. Now, if you all keep quiet, I sit quite naturally. Sir Henry, your hand, please. Sir Charles, can you speak to us? Let us know if you're present. There are things that only you can explain. Speak to us, Sir Charles, if you're here. There are things that only you can tell us. Sir Charles, can you speak to us? Let us know if you're present. There are things that only you can tell us. Speak to us, Sir Charles, if you're here. There are things that only you can explain. That sound. I've heard it before. It's nothing. Nothing but the wind. Or a bittern. I was telling Dr. Watson only yesterday about it. Sir Charles? What happened that night? What was it you feared? Tell us, Sir Charles, of all the weird, terrible things that have happened on the moor. Listen. There it is again. Oh, I can't stand it. Will somebody put on the lights, please? I tell you, it's nothing. Nothing but the wind. Mr. Franklin, what did you think it was? The hound, of course. The hound of the Baskervilles. Any fool would know that. James, get my cape. Take me home. Very well, my dear. Dr. Watson, can I give you and Sir Henry a lift? No, thank you. We have our own carriage. You're trembling. That wasn't the wind we heard. I've heard that sound before, often. That's what I tried to tell you yesterday on the moor. That's why I wish you hadn't come here. But sounds can't hurt you. It doesn't matter what they are or where they come from. You don't know. Oh, you've got to get all that nonsense out of your head, Beryl. I wish I could. You're going to. I'm going to make it my business to see that you do. You've been alone too much. There's nothing to do down here. That's the trouble. I'm going to change all that, if you'll let me. We'll go fishing together, riding. You like riding? Yes, I do. Good. We'll start tomorrow, shall we? Yes, thanks. Fine. I'll ride over for you in the morning. Are you coming, Sir Henry? Right, Doctor. Good night. Good night. Hello. Hello. 
Hello, Beryl. Well, where should we go today? There's one place we haven't been, High Tor. Fine. That's where all the old ruins are. You know, Jack says that they're over 50,000 years old. That sounds interesting. And you can still see the remains of their stone huts. All right, good. Those flattish stones over there, they're graves. Oh, and those huge ones, monoliths, the remains of their temples. Doesn't anybody know who they were or what they looked like? <laughs> Jack has some theory about them. But anyway, they must have been very primitive, living on roots and dressing in skins. <laughs> but still laughing and dreaming, just as we do. <laughs> I wonder how many times some young savage brought his bride into this very hut. Said, take your hat off, darling, this is home. <laughs> You know, this is probably where she cooked his first meal for him. <laughs> what a yell he must have let out when she burnt it up. <laughs> and now they're quite forgotten. Just as we will be, too, one day. Do you suppose when a man met a girl that he liked, that he had to wait a respectably long time before he dared tell her? Or things like that, sudden, natural? I'd like to think that things were like that. Beryl, that's the way they are with me. Oh. Oh, but we've, we've only known each other such a little while. There, you see, convention, custom. We can't even be ourselves when we want to be. Why is that? You know, I used to come down here quite often and explore these old caves when Jack and I first came to live here. I didn't have the fear of the moor then. And you've none now. That's all gone. Oh. When I'm with you, it's gone. I seem to forget it, laughing and talking. But when I'm alone, it all comes back to me. And at night, I, I still wake up trembling, as if in my sleep I could hear those awful noises. Then it gets bad as ever, and I... Oh, I think of you, and I wish you weren't here. Oh, don't say that. Well, I wish you were in London or, or in Canada. But even if I wanted to go back to London or Canada, I couldn't. Why not? Well, you know why. You must know why. I can't go anywhere now, unless you come with me. Oh, Henry. Oh. <laughs> Would you mind uh, pausing for a minute? I'm afraid I've lost my way. Oh, hello, Doctor. Sir Henry and I were just... We were... We were... We were getting engaged. Engaged? Splendid. May I congratulate you both? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Who is that? It seems that we didn't pick a very secluded spot. What do you want? Just crossing the moor, sir. Just crossing the moor. I be, uh, I be peddling my wares, sir. I, I, I must have something here. Would interest you, sir? How about it? How about a nice mouth organ, sir? No, thank you. Oh, here, here, here's something an old squire like you could use, sir. A, a fussel. A fussel for calling your sheepdog. Calling my what? Sheepdog, sir. A regular charmer, sir. Hear him for miles around, sir. <laughs> Take it away and yourself with it. I'll be some, I'll be some scent for the lady, sir. Oh, That'll please. do. Be off about your business. All right, all right, sir. I ain't doing no harm. I ain't doing no harm. You know, that's what I hate about this moor. There's always something strange. Look, he's limping on the other foot now. Note. No one, sir. I found it slipped under the front door. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, Bannerman, uh, is Sir Henry at home? No, sir. He's gone across the moor. Oh, I'm sorry I missed him. Did Dr. Watson go with him? No, sir. Oh, thank you, Baron. I'll tell Sir Henry your call, sir. Yes, do.
Was it you who sent me that communication? I did, sir. Out with it. Whatever it is you want me to hear. I, I only want you to hear this zither, sir. Zither? He don't come no finer, sir. What blasted impertinence. Getting me out here to... Look here, my man. You're up to something. I, I only ask you to try him, sir. Be careful. This thing's loaded. Who are you? Well, I might ask the same of you, sir. Prowling around the moor, spying out on everybody. That's my business. To spy. Oh, what is, is it? Yes, and if you want to know who I am, I'll tell you. Who are ye? I'm Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes, the detective? Yes, yeah, so and now perhaps you realize why I can't be hoodwinked. Oh, sir, 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 that changes everything. Now, who are you? Quick! Well, in that case, sir, my name must be Watson. <laughs> Holmes! How are you, my dear fellow? A fine detective you are, calling yourself Sherlock Holmes. So you've been down here on the moor all the time? That's a fine way to treat me, I must say. <laughs> Send me down here. Let me think that you were in London, working on that black man case. Let me sit up half the night, writing those blasted reports. Serious reports, my dear. What's them very valuable they were, too. I made arrangements to have them forwarded on to me. A shabby trick, which I'll not forget. Ah, but a very necessary trick. If I'd come down here with you and Sir Henry, every movement of mine would have been watched. While in this way, only you and Sir Henry have been watched, and I've been free to work. That's all very well. But making a fool of me. Sit down, Watson. Do sit down. Perhaps a little supper will help you to get over your huff. Huff? I'm in no huff. Here, try some of these sardines. It's a pity I didn't know you were coming. I'd have provided a brace of pheasants. It's a pity you didn't think of bringing down that infernal violin of yours to regale me with some of your enchanting music. I did, my dear Watson. Anything to oblige. <laughs> Well, if you've had enough to eat, Watson, and you're feeling in better spirits, I think we'd better be getting along. Getting along where, if I'm not praying? I'm returning with you to Baskerville Hall. There are still some gaps to be filled in, but all in all, things are becoming a little clearer. Not to me, I assure you. Still a hopeless jumble. Mr. Franklin, Dr. Mortimer, the Barrowmans. Put it all together, and what have you got? Murder, my dear Watson. Refined, cold-blooded murder. Murder? There's no doubt about it in my mind. Or perhaps I should say in my imagination. But that's where crimes are conceived and where they're solved. In the imagination. But there's been no murder. Unless you mean Sir Charles. And the facts clearly indicated that he died from heart failure. That's why so many murders remain unsolved, Watson. People will stick to facts, even though they prove nothing. Now, if we go beyond facts, use our imagination as the criminal does. Imagine what might have happened and act upon it. As I've been trying to do in this case, we usually find ourselves justified. Then you know? Another day, two at the most, and I will know. My one fear is that the murderer will strike before we're ready. In that case... What's that? Where's it coming from? There. No, 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 there. Found! Come on, Watson, quick! have run along that ridge and fallen over the cliff. He's dead. Skull crushed in. The convict. Thank heaven. What? That's the man I shot at the night we arrived. The man Barrowman was signaling to. Who is it? The Notting Hill murderer. He escaped from prison last month. Been hiding on the moor ever since. The Notting Hill murderer? Do you mean that he is responsible for all this? That remains to be seen. But he's wearing Sir Henry's clothes. Yes, yes, that accounts for it. Accounts for what? For the hound. These clothes were the cause of that poor devil's death. Do you mean that the hound was after Sir Henry? Yes, and mistook the convict for him because of the scent of the clothes. Do you remember that missing boot, Watson? Why do you suppose the brown one, the one that had never been worn, was so mysteriously replaced in the black one taken? Why? Because a boot that had never been worn wouldn't have had the scent of the owner. And the black one had. But how does this convict come to be wearing Sir Henry's clothes? Oh, well, that's simple enough. 
Why, Dr. Watson. Is somebody hurt? Who's this? The convict who escaped from Princeton. Oh, how terrible. I heard a cry. That's what brought me over here. What's your theory about it, Mr. Holmes? You know, quick at identification. Oh, everybody knows you, sir. As a matter of fact, we've been expecting you down here. My name's Stapleton. How do you do? You came in time to see a tragedy. Yes. It's a most unpleasant remembrance for me to take back to London tomorrow. Oh, must you go so soon? I've been looking forward to meeting you. Yes, yes, I'm afraid I must. Oh, we were hoping, Mr. Holmes, that you may be able to shed some light on the occurrences that have puzzled us down here. Yes, but an investigator needs something more than legends and rumors. Oh, quite so. Give me a hand, will you, Watson? We'd better put this poor fellow in one of the huts till the morning. Oh, let me give you a hand. Oh, I think we can manage all right, thank you. Where's Sir Henry Barrowman? In the library, sir. Now, oh, Barrowman, if your wife's still up, will you tell her Mr. Sherlock Holmes would like a word with her? Sherlock Holmes? Yes. Yes, sir. Thank you. Sir Henry! Holmes! I'm glad to see you so well, Sir Henry. Why didn't you tell me Mr. Holmes was coming? Well, I was Oh, just... he didn't know. We ran across each other in the village. I am glad to see you. What is it, Barrowman? Oh, I asked to see Mrs. Barrowman, if you don't mind, Sir Henry. Of course not. Come in, Mrs. Barrowman. I, uh, I think you'd better sit down. Thank you, sir. I prefer to stand. I'm afraid I have some rather bad news for you. What is it? Well, it's going to be a bit of a shock. Oh. They've caught him. Your... Your brother... They'll hang him for sure. No, Mrs. Barrowman. He's beyond the law now. He's in more merciful hands. We came upon the poor fellow as we were crossing the moor. He must have missed his footing and fallen over the cliff. No further need, Barrowman, to signal to him from the window or take food out to him or give him Sir Henry's discarded clothes. Go, Sir Henry. It was all my doing. Barrowman here wanted to tell you all along so as you could notify the police. But he was my kin, my old kin. Even though he was not never any good. We understand. He won't hold it against Bannerman. Will you, sir? Of course not. Now take her along and see that she's all right. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Well, it's nice to get that end cleared up for their sake as well as mine. That clears up everything, I think, Sir Henry. That poor devil must have been completely demented. And that accounts for those dreadful noises that we've been hearing from time to time. Exactly. Your troubles are over, Sir Henry. <clears throat> I really am most grateful, Mr. Holmes. Oh, not at all. I've done little enough. But you can sleep peacefully in your bed now and commence to lead the life of a happy country squire. Well, not for a little bit, I'm afraid. I'm off to Canada again. Canada? Beryl, Miss Stapleton and I are going to be married. Miss Stapleton. A very charming young lady. Congratulations. Everything's arranged. Her brother's giving us a farewell party tomorrow night. We'll be married in London the following day, and then off for a honeymoon to Canada. My congratulations too, Sir Henry. Thanks. What luck you're here. You and Dr. Watson will be with us tomorrow night. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm afraid I can't. I must hurry back to London. And so should you too, Watson. We'll have to report to the police here about that convict in the morning, but there's a train leaving early in the afternoon. Oh, what a pity. Beryl will be dreadfully disappointed. Now, we'll remedy that when you come up to London. You must... You must dine with us before you sail. Well, there's the old boy himself, Sir Hugo. Hugo, the beast of the Baskervilles. Not a bad bit of brushwork. By Ransom, one of the minor painters. Oh, I don't imagine it's very valuable. I can't quite agree with you, Sir Henry. One day it might prove to be of the greatest value. Well, we must be going. Still one or two little points, Holmes, and I can't for the life of me reconcile with your theory about that poor demented convict. One or two little points? But surely you can't mean that he was in London three weeks ago? Sent that letter? Stole that boot? Of course not. And who the devil did? The same person who was responsible for the death of that convict last night. And will try again to murder Sir Henry tonight. Tonight? Unless my imagination has run away with itself, and I don't think that it has. Then why are we rushing up to London? 
leaving Sir Henry entirely unprotected. We're not, my dear Watson. We're just giving the impression of rushing up to London. In a minute and a half, we'll be in Oakhampton. There, we'll catch a train back to Dartmoor. If my surmise is correct, we'll nab our man in the act. But if you know who it is, why all this round about rigmarole? Why don't you have him arrested? Because I've no case. Not a shred of evidence that would hold in any court. The only way is to catch him red-handed, to catch him in such a way that there's no escape, no alibi. That means gambling with Sir Henry's life. But you can't possibly... Gambling to save his life. But we've got to take that chance. Otherwise, the shadow of sudden death will be forever hanging over his head, and sooner or later... Here we are, O'Campton. And may you both spend the rest of your years together in happy contentment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And now, I want to thank you all for the kindness that you've shown a stranger. And when Beryl and I return, I want you to know that you'll always be welcome at Baskerville Hall. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you, you Sir Henry. It's going to be lonely for you, Mr. Stapleton, with Beryl gone. Yes, indeed it will, Mrs. Mortimer. I shall be more dependent than ever upon you, my neighbors. Don't count upon me, sir. In my opinion, you're a body snatcher. And until the courts have decreed otherwise, I want nothing whatsoever to do with you. <laughs> oh, Mr. Franklin. <laughs> I say, driver, can't we go a little faster? I'm doing the best I can, sir. You idiot! Ooh. We said go faster, not break our necks. How far is it to Baskerville Hall? It's five miles by road, sir, but if you want to cut over the moor, it's only about three. Here you are. Come on, Watson, quick. Thank you, sir. It's been a wonderful evening, Stapleton. Well, glad you could be with us, Mortimer. Thank you. Take this brooch, my dear, and wear it on your wedding dress. It belonged to my great-grandmother. Something old, something new. <laughs> you know. Oh, that's so sweet of you, Mrs. Mortimer. Thank you so much. And come back to us soon, both of you. We will. <clears throat> May I offer you a lift, my lad? It's such a beautiful night, Mr. Franklin. I think I'll walk, thank you. Merely a gesture of hospitality. Reject it if you like. <laughs> Get up there! You're not going to cross the moor alone, Sir Henry. Why not? There's, there's nothing to fear anymore. We can't be sure. Oh, but I have Mr. Sherlock Holmes' own word for it. Come along, James. Good night, Sir Henry. Good night, Mr. Mortimer. And the best of luck to you both. Night, thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. I wish you'd let Mr. Franklin drive you home. I wanted to stay and say good night to you. This is our last good night. From tomorrow on, there won't be any more, ever. Tomorrow we'll be away from this place. I wish it were now. So do I. Oh, now, don't be silly. Good night, Beryl. Good night, dear. Well, was it a nice party? Wonderful. Everything, and most of all, you. Jack, I haven't said very much about going away, but you know how I feel. Yes, of course. It had to be. Well, you won't be too dreadfully lonely, will you? Well, I shall have my work. And... Oh, Henry and I'll be back before you even know it. Yes, of course you will. Well, you better go to bed now. You've got a big day ahead of you tomorrow. Good night, Jack. Good night, dear.
Coming too. <sighs> You'll be all right, old man. What? Yes, old chap. Mr. Holmes? Yes. What 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 was it? We've got to get him home quickly. Can you manage him alone? Yes. Because I've got things to do. Help get his arm around my shoulder. I'm all right.
It's pretty painful, I know. But it won't take much longer. Go on, it doesn't hurt. Now, Mrs. Barryman, some gauze, please. I just heard the dreadful news. Thank heavens you're safe. Is he all right? Well, now we know for certain that this is no legend, no myth. There really is a hound. Was a hound? Yes, Mr. Holmes told me. I ran into him across the moor. He asked me to send you to him at once. It's a matter of great importance. He said he'd wait for you at the spot where the, where the beast was killed. I must finish here first. This poor boy's taken a terrific beating. Well, uh, I could carry on for you, Doctor. I'm a bit of a doctor myself, you know. Do you think you could manage? Yes, I'm sure I could. I think you really ought to go, Dr. Watson. Mr. Holmes was most urgent. Oh, really? I, uh, I shall need some hot water, Mrs. Baderman. Oh, I want it boiling, please. Yes, sir. It must have been a terrifying experience, Sir Henry. Terrifying. It was. It was indeed. Yes, I can see you're still weak from loss of blood. I can't say I feel any too well. Here, drink this, Sir Henry. You'll feel much stronger. I'll see to your other bandages after. Oh, it may taste a little bitter, but don't mind that. Sir Henry! Well, feeling better? Yes, thanks. I say, that's uncomfortably close to your eye, isn't it? Another one on this side? Huh? Oh, well, well, well. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. That was clumsy of me. It was only a bit of a tonic. Sir Henry's lost considerable blood. Yes? Henry! Henry! I'm all right, darling. Oh, oh, no, you're not. We heard those dreadful noises on the way home. It's a mercy he's alive. I owe you an apology, Sir Henry, for jeopardizing your life. Jeopardizing? But you saved my life. But there was no possible way for me to foretell the fog. And I must apologize, too, for deceiving you last night. When I told you that your troubles were over, I knew that they weren't. But if I hadn't cleared out, the crisis which came tonight would have been indefinitely postponed with the shadow of death hanging over you. And over you, too, Miss Stapleton. You knew this was going to happen? How could you know? The person who wanted to snuff out your life, Sir Henry, was the same one who plotted to kill your uncle. He wanted to get you both out of the way, so that he could lay claim to this place, to the whole Baskerville estate. In tracing back his lineage, he discovered not only that he was the next of kin, but also learned of that old legend about the hound. So he brought the hound to life, by the simple expedient of buying the most savage dog that he could find and hiding it here on the moor until he needed it. If he had succeeded tonight, the blame would have fallen on the legendary monster, and no possible suspicion would have been attached to him. A most ingenious device. And I'm quite sure that he would have had no difficulty in proving his claim to Baskerville Hall and all that goes with it. The most amazing instance of a throwback that I've ever seen. And you can see for yourself. Stapleton! One move and I'll shoot! Jack! You two, stay where you are. You're under arrest, Stapleton. For the murder of Sir Charles Baskerville, the murder of a convict, and the attempted murder of Sir Henry. You can't arrest me, Holmes. I won't move from any of you and I'll blast you all at kingdom come. So sorry, old boy. What's the matter, old man? What's the matter? That's our man. Stapleton, the murderer? He won't get very far. I've posted constables on both the roads and the only other way is across the Grimpen Mire. I'm so sorry, Miss Stapleton. I wish I could have spared you this. Well, that officially closes the case, Sir Henry. And a very interesting case for your annals, Watson. An ordinary dog, an ingenious criminal. And a more ingenious detective. I owe you a tremendous debt of gratitude. Oh, we all do, Sir Henry. Mr. Holmes, we've admired you in the past, as does every Englishman. Your record as our greatest detective is known throughout the world. But this, seeing how you work, knowing that there is in England such a man as you, gives us all a sense of safety and security. God bless you, Mr. Holmes. Thank you, Dr. Mortimer. Thank you. And now, if you don't mind, I've had rather a strenuous day. I, I think I'll turn in. Of course. 
Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Mr. Holmes. Good night. Oh, Watson, the needle. Thank you.